thanks for joining us for the Changing the Industry podcast, where we try to effectuate change for the better, one conversation at a time. Part of that change is providing help for those that need it. This is why we've partnered with the Institute for Automotive Business Excellence. Whether it's help with sales, operations, or just getting your numbers in order, these folks are some of the very best in the industry. And for our listeners, they'll sit down with you and go over your strengths, your weaknesses, and the opportunities that are in front of you. They'll create a customized plan for how to move forward absolutely free. That's right, free. And if your plan includes one-on-one coaching, they can also help you with that. There's no hard sales pitch, no obligation, just honest help from honest people. So if that's something that you think could benefit you, make sure you click on the link in the show notes. And now, on to the show. What deals have we got to do? The tables. I can't read the table. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You oh, yeah. Go we got to go do uh, videos by each one of the tables. Yeah. Oh, they'll be back tomorrow. Hey, um, no, they won't. They, they, tonight's the only night. And um, <laughs> Flow Tech, I just got you guys set up with him about doing a video with him. If you, He's not on my list. What? Flow Tech? You need, to, you need to talk to him. Because, hey, you know how all these transmission companies are now saying that we have to hot flush yeah. the entire system? I've heard they're, of that. They've been saying that Flow for tech? years, dear. They're not on my well, list. I know, but they're, they're... Into the mic, they're, dear. They're not on You're your You're recording? List, no. But they're out there. Oh. We can only do so many. You can only do so many? You what need to you cut them shorter. He likes to cut things short. <laughs> No, when you, it's just like you guys just did one for an hour and, a, and 20 minutes. Yeah. Right. Well, within two hours, we can only do maybe six. Six tra- what? Six Inter- interviews? Yeah. You can't might, get into good topics. We really don't get to know people. We just kind of brush across. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody's going to watch an hour and a half video unless it's uh, the uh, Top Gun or something like that. Top but gun. I'll listen to an hour. Did you oh, watch it? No, no, hold on. Okay, now. tell me when we're starting. Is, tell me when you guys are ready to start. We're already oh, started. We started it like going. 20 minutes ago. About? Where you been? Yeah. <laughs> we'll do it. <laughs> we got- Je- Jeff, let me introduce you to a little website called YouTube. And on YouTube, there are something called visual podcasts. And these people will sit down and they yes, will they have conversations. Don't look at me like I got two heads. This is real. They will have conversations. Oh, I'm sorry, that was my glasses. <laughs> <laughs> they will have conversations. He's a damn good fit for, for our show. Two, you know that. Yeah. Two, well, that's why we brought him on. I took care of that for you. Don't worry. I'm trying to create good content here for our <laughs> listeners. <laughs> two to three hours long. Two to three hours long. And people will watch the entire thing. Yeah. Two to three hours long. They watch it. Do they two watch people. it in one setting, or is that breaking well, up? Some, yes, no, yeah. okay. a little bit of both. Yeah, nah, because we work for a living and we have a life. You work for I, a living. I, I, I'm so, trying to get so you Lucas, out of that. Hey, we're here on <laughs> Lucas Podcast, changing the industry. Podcast. With changing the industry, buddy. I, th- I, th- I think they know where they're where they're watching. David, yeah. John Firm. <laughs> yep, John Firm. Bucking Buck Buckaroo Bob. Yeah. Did I like say that it. right? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I nailed that sucker. <laughs> I've been practicing all week. Have you? No. Yeah. <laughs> and Jeff Buckley. <laughs> Nothing after that. Unless, I, unless my you father's say, shop is a, is a great shop name, by the way. I, I, mean, love, yeah, I love that, that shop too. name. Yeah. We, we created my that name shop. years ago, and it was because the Lord gave me the abilities to do what I do. Right. And it's so funny when you call and get parts, they're like, Okay, what's the name of your shop? Well, I'm calling from my father's shop. Okay, which which <laughs> uh, <who's your> <laughs> what's the name of the shop? <laughs> That's awesome. Well, what's what's the name of it? My father's shop. <laughs> well, well, what's your dad's name? What does that have to do with the name of my shop? <laughs> oh my gosh! Once, I hadn't thought once, of that. Once they get it, yeah, they always remember. You always yeah. remember. Yeah. Oh yeah, my father's shop. Well, it's a good shop name. Oh, so is. this oh, is pretty neat. We appreciate you inviting us out here. Your your shop name's a little pedestrian. Not gonna lie. Thank you, buddy. firm automotive. Yes, it's like well, yeah, solid. There's you nothing know? there that's really firm, but <laughs> I no, see, concrete that, that all would out front. that would make sense if you're yeah. like, well, because we're you know. 
firm in our foundation, but it turns out it's just a lot, your last name. Exactly. But, you know, I don't put the apostrophe S on it. Firm's automotive. It's firm automotive. Okay. There's no okay. S. There's no apostrophe S. I know that makes and sense. And I've had people do business cards with the apostrophe S. And that ain't what I told you guys. It's, <laughs> it's firm automotive. You know, right. and I did that intentionally so it's sellable. You like this new <laughs> <laughs> You like his new shirt? Aren't these sharp? I do. With the two different colors? I like it. Can you believe? So Lucas decided he was going to get orange and hot pink. And they are the most grotesque things I've ever seen in my entire life. But nobody nobody questions where you're from. Exactly. Yeah. So that's like. That's like, I question a lot of things about that decision. So the, the uniform guy kind shows of figure up. Figure out where you're from when it has the pink in. I know, right? Well, I just did fit. And he, and he didn't look at the whole uniform. He just goes, "I don't know uh, that one," and he gestured generally towards the page. And then the guy goes, "Well, I'm going to grab the." Lowest selling uniform color combination we have. The ones have been sitting there and I'm for. I'm going to get uh, the bonus. Yeah. The ones have been sitting there for ten years. Yes, yeah. that's yeah. what they, they look surplus. like. They've he been said, sitting have there a for ten on? years. That, exactly. He didn't pass along the discount. He just said, "Oh no, this is the trend, Mister Underwood." And he's like, <sighs> "They added Mister on the front of that." No, they say that no, to him when they're not. trying to sell him a bad bill of goods. Hell yeah, they did. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they don't even call me by my name. That's a song, dude. Quit. I was going to say it's David Allen Coe, but we probably better not bring him up, had we? Yeah. Are, are I don't we, know what you're are saying. Are we ri- riling you? Are we getting you? Come, are you I, like, if can, you, can't talk? So if you, you want to talk about wires? Have you ever seen wires like this? Oh, you're not supposed to <laughs> say know, nothing about un, that. Underneath the hood of a car. Underneath the hood of a car. That is they, this thing right they, here. They chew on <laughs> the wires. That is this thing right here. This, <laughs> this is wire We had one rule, Jeff. One rule. <laughs> one rule. And you, it's have you like, ever heard the story about it, the wires? It's have like you, you take spaghetti and you throw it on the wall and if it sticks. So I guess that's it, what happened here. They threw the wires Do you know how this wires. happened? Do you know why it's like this now? It don't bother me. It's not on camera. Well, no, look. <laughs> look, this dude right here. Okay, we're, we're at a trade show. And my team went in. <laughs> And they set everything. I up. thought he was your team. No, no, no. no we no, were no. at Apex, he has and you were like, a lot of it. "I'm waiting on my team." And he showed up, and you had this other guy. Mm-hmm. That was carry Eric. this stuff. That was Eric. Yeah. Well, so I, I believe I'm it or not, I have now. a repair shop. I'm right? the team. Is that how this goes? <laughs> no, you're not on the team. <laughs> You are the you are the you play for the other I, team. This is this this is a uh, this is a promotion because he normally calls me the help, and so <laughs> see see when I come in. Now we're going to talk about Leave your that name. for the help. He'll clean up. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> we're talking about your shop name, Done with Care Auto Repair. Whoa, 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 whoa! You that's not his shop name. He's Done with Auto Repair. I'm Done with. It says Done with Care. That's yeah, a typo. Take, yeah, they're supposed to take care out. So you got a discount on your shirts too. Well, they they, now, see, they typoed them. We get them. the good quality stuff here. They typoed it, and then I they gave it to me at such a cheap price. I'm like, well, that's what I just oh, said. Wear it to you trade shows. Uh, now, now we're just not going to talk a bunch of yeah, stuff. We we're going to talk about some real. This is what honest this is, stuff that we're changing the I, industry with here I, at ETI. We're, we're going to. I've got a question for you. The most challenging part of building any estimate is finding the right parts in stock and at the right price. Now you could open a bunch of tabs, search each vendor's website, enter your customer's vehicle information, and compare pricing and availability. But if you're following the 300% rule, this can take up a lot of your time. That's why Lucas and I both use Parts Tech at our shops. It's one website to see an unlimited number of parts and tire vendors. With one click, we can import parts and order them from multiple vendors all at once. And here's the best part. Parts Tech is absolutely free to use. And your shop management system is probably already able to connect with it. To get started, just click the link in the show notes or go to partstech.com forward slash podcast. That's partstech.com forward slash podcast podcast. Hey, one more thing. If you find out that your shop management system doesn't integrate with Parts Tech, it's time to upgrade. David and I use what we believe to be the very best system on the market, shopware. 
With unmatched features like Parts GP Optimizer and DVX, which is their digital vehicle experience, Shopware really is way more than just a shop management software. With it, you'll be able to create an immersive and interactive experience for your client, setting you apart from everyone else using run-of-the-mill software. Are you ready to upgrade? Click the link in the show notes to get started. And I, I hope I don't cross the line asking it. You might. Well, I, okay. <laughs> I you got know, John Furman. <laughs> you've been here all week, and you hadn't heard nobody pick on me. That's right. Well, okay. no, Thank I, you. I, I want to ask a question. Um, I've got a lot of friends who own shops, right? And a lot of them, and I, I mean this with absolutely no disrespect whatsoever, right? But but I've watched you go through you some know of when the, they say I mean this with no disrespect. It's going to be disrespect. probably going to be disrespect. With <laughs> Answer the question. But and you know you're on my friends list with, now. With all with well, all due respect, I can say I'm whatever I want I, after that. I'm it's trying, in the Geneva Convention. I'm trying to say this without saying you know like I always say to Dutch, he's old or something. You know, uh, you went through some health issues a while back, right? And, and recently, yeah. Yeah, and so I, I guess my question for you is: Is you're talking about his arm in a sling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, wrestling was a bear. I was off for three months. Right, and and you know I've I've watched you go through that, and I think about a lot of the shop owners that we work with. Right, we all know a lot of shop owners, and a lot of them would not have had that flexibility and been okay if they had to take off three months and they were the only one they could depend on. Right. I worry about a lot of the the guys that I work with, and I, I've told a story here before. David posted a video of it a while back, and it was about a shop owner, and and the deal was is that he's in North Carolina, and we were trying to promote an event we were doing in North Carolina, and so we went to this shop, and we were just going shop to shop to shop places we had never been before, and we walk in, this shop's absolutely packed full of people, or packed full of cars, and and there's this guy in there. And he looks just absolutely stressed to the max. You can just see it in his face. And and we said, hey, have you got a minute to talk? We want to talk about this training we're going to do. We're going to do a lot of really good stuff. And it was really just a gathering, I think. And he said, I don't know what makes you think I can get out of here. And the guy that was with me said, well, what, what are you talking about? He said, I'm going to die in this shop. He said, what? I'm going to die in this shop. And he said, and the guy that's with me said, well, what do you mean? He said, I, he said, listen, he said, the only way out of the shops, I'm either going to die or commit suicide here. It's the only, and I'm like, do what? And he said, listen, he said, I was given this shop. He said, I worked for the people who owned it. He said, the husband started the shop. He passed away. And he said, then the wife passed away, and then it was my shop. And he said, I don't see any way out of here. I don't see any way that I can have a life outside of this place. I don't see anything that I can do. And I see a lot of shop owners, and I don't know about you guys, but I see a lot of shop owners who are in that similar boat that if he had got hurt, right, like if he had been in a situation like you where he had to have that work done, he wouldn't have been okay to to continue on to, you know, financially and whatnot. What? Well, that's, that's, that's not crossing the line or anything because it's – I totally agree that there's ones that don't think that they can get out of the shop, don't think that they can close their shop uh, to take a vacation, to have family time, to enjoy it. And it just comes back to number one is what's your philosophy. Number two is, you know, what what makes you happy yeah. and why you why are you making a living? Why, why are you, uh, you know, running your shop? We decided, uh, I've had a, a big shop. We started in mobile service stations. Okay. So I had, a, you know, pump gas. Yeah. We had the full service back then, and, you know, we had a bay, and we did uh, state inspections. And then we had a big shop that um, had did paint and body and mechanical. Okay. And so I had painter, had mechanics, and right. we uh, actually had a, a big truck paint booth and we painted, you know, okay. uh, Continental batteries, interstate battery. We painted, you know, big trucks, right. del delivery trucks, I guess you would call them. And uh, we uh, transitioned and we went to uh, what we have now. Mm -hmm. And basically, you know, because of the economy, um, the uh, guy that owned our building, the first one, we... Uh, 
you know, they came in and was like, okay, <laughs> right. here's your notice, you're out of our building. And the second Holy one, cow. the uh, and that was, there's a, a whole lot of stories behind. This was like, we got married November 11th. Okay. And right before Christmas, we had bought, uh, bought a house, bought a new wrecker. We had bought all the stuff in the shop so we could be the dealer. Right. And right before Christmas, they came in and signed the paperwork. And my Holy name cow. happened to... Last name happened to match the same last name as someone that they've had issues with, family members. Right. And oh my gosh. he goes, are you related? Do you know? So I was, so, and I was like, yeah, one's well, from my brother, one's my dad. And he goes, oh, you got three days to get out of my building. And we had just bought a house. Holy cow. Okay. Just that quick and simple, no. <laughs> and so when you talk about going through different deals, it's like, okay, you just got married. You just, you know, how do you go through all that? And so then it was like, okay, so we moved on. We had this other shop. It was a big building. And um, when the interest rate went way up, you know, when they had the adjustable rate mortgages, uh where we where we lived, literally, you could go up and down the street, and there would be three occupied houses on a whole street. You know, because right. the uh, mortgage rates went up, interest rates went up, and the people just walked away from their houses. Right. Well, the guy that owned our building owned a bunch of buildings, mm-hmm. and he went bankrupt, and, and so he lost the buildings, and so the bank came in and said, uh, "Hey." you're not paying enough rent. And I'm like, that's what the deal was. And it's like, no, square footage wise, your rent should be three times. Holy cow. And we said, okay, let's think about this. He can't keep these buildings full at this rate. Right. What in the world makes you think you can fill them at, at three times the rate, literally three times the rate. And so then we said, we will buy the building. And they were like, no, oh, we got to keep it on the rolls and, you know, for a year, take a loss. The guy in front of me had a manufacturing business and our building was separate from the rest of them that were empty. Yeah. And so he goes, hey, don't worry about it. I'll, I'll buy the buildings and then we'll make a deal. You work on my stuff, you know, they'll yeah. cover your rent. But I need the rest of the buildings, not yours. And so he tried to make a deal and the bank was like, no. This was on a Friday. On a Sunday, they put a sign out in front of our shop for sale. <laughs> You're a kid. And uh, we called them and said, what's the deal? I said, well, you're out. Well, we know what happened was a friend of, of a friend goes, hey, I got this. We can get this guy out. Now you got a business that's already been running. Right. And so fool me once, fool me twice. Right. So where we live... Uh, in Midlothian, it was county. We went to the county and said, mm-hmm. hey, can we put a shop here? Can we? Yeah, as long as you register, you pay your taxes. Right. And uh, so we're fortunate that uh, I don't have a commute. Our shop is right behind our house, but it's on several acres. And so there was basically a little county road, barely two lanes and a one-lane bridge. Okay. And you could count how many cars went by without taking your shoes off. On a one day period. Uh, and one day. <laughs> <laughs> and so I did fleet stuff. And so uh, I designed uh, a system. And so the company, uh, you know, when you talk about fleets, uh, we had a fleet of like 77 vehicles that I took care of. And uh, so we, uh, we decided years earlier that my wife would be, our, you know, my wife would be stay at home mom. She was like, and so we've raised four children. So when we put the shop by the the house on the same property, it was for a reason that, number one, we owned it now. <laughs> right. It's like, fool me once, fool me twice. You're not going to yeah. give it. This time it's mine. It's mine. And that's why a lot of these ones that don't own their property and stuff, it's like, uh, yeah. I've been through that. So I, I know the issues. So we decided years earlier that we wouldn't have – a big fancy new house. We wouldn't have brand new cars, right? But we would have a nice 
live a house and we'd, you know, my wife would be able to focus on, we're not two incomes. My wife would be able to focus on raising the kids. Right. And it was country and we had uh, ponies, horse, we had chickens, goats, we had, you know, rabbits. No. You know, we raised the kids, you know, to do, uh, to, to understand what work is, to understand, right. you know, what responsibilities are. And we raised, uh, I like to say we raised our kids to be champions and, uh, you know, to be respectful and to understand. And that was more important to us than, than having a big shop and a bunch of employees. It was like, so if the kids had activities at the school, Candace could go to them. If uh, the kids got older and they did sports, I actually coached all of their, so at, at one time, you know, we have four of them playing basketball. I coached all four basketball teams. And so I would, you know, have the time to do that. And so you just make adjustments. You decide what's important to you, what makes, uh, you know, what, what you want to leave behind. And uh, Dutch said something the other day. He goes, uh, and you guys were around, and he goes, you know, when they put me in the ground, what are they going to do, throw all that stuff on top of me? No. Right. It's like, so you got to understand what makes a difference and what makes it meaning to the your legacy. life. And uh, so, uh, you know, if I if the kids had a game in the evening and I'd do that, so I might have to get up early in the morning to work, or I might stay late, you know, we'd, I'd go to their, if they had activity or something, we'd go to it, and then I'd come home, and if I was out there late working, and years later, when my kids were teenagers, one of them said, several of them, you know, said, you know, Dad, uh, we appreciate <clears throat> what y'all have done for us because we go to school and all of our friends, you know, their, their dad is traveling. Their dad is working all the time. Yeah. Or their mom or mom and dad is working, you know, and it's like, they're like, oh, my gosh, your parents come to everything. Oh, my gosh. You know, our parents are never around. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And at that point, you, you understand, you know, that they realize. And it's like, you know, they didn't have the, the Michael Jordan shoes and they didn't have the fancy clothes, but they always had clothes to wear. And they had, you know, and, and when it came to cars, their friends would have brand new cars in high school. Right. Right. And, Ridiculous, right? And within a week or two, you know, they'd wreck them or whatever. And my kids would say, hey. And I said, let me tell you something. You're never going to have a better car than I have unless you go buy it. Right. And, but they always had something to drive. We would get customers' cars that, you know, they were like, oh, hey, we're going to trade it in. Okay, well, you're not going to get nothing. And, and uh, or it needed some repairs. And they're like, oh, we don't have any money in it. And, you know, we would get them something fixed up because that's what we do. Right. And of course, back then I could do paint and body and, and mechanical stuff. It was, it don't matter what the car looked like. I could make it look yeah. like new because we, I, I used to fix up what we call classic cars now. Right. I used to do all that stuff and we'd paint them. And it was like, you know, uh, a mechanic looks at it, wants a, a good looking car that needs repairs. Paint and body guy wants a car that runs. <laughs> right. Because it it looks like, they can fix it. Well, I could do either. I right. could do both. So it didn't matter at me as long as, the, you know. Well, so that's what we've done. And then as we, as the kids got older and everything, and it's like, okay, we've had the the shop where we had, uh, you know, the, the, the gas station, and we had the other shop where we had employees. And now it was like, okay, we schedule when the kids were growing. Okay, we got this event, so we went schedule anything we wouldn't bring anything in and um, it was like you know that's just what we decided to work for us and then as the kids got older it was like okay do we need to bring someone in and you know you didn't have as much issues as it is now trying to find a technician you know you'd bring a young kid in you'd train them and stuff like that um, it just you know it 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 was like, okay, we just, that isn't what worked for us, you right. know, because people are like, we heard one, uh, one of the guys that's here with the group was like, okay, I got three shops and I'm going to get five shops or something like this. And, and John's over here going, oh, next year, you know, this year my goal is $3 million. And it's like, okay, well, 
You know, that just, it, it wasn't, you know, what, what was Important necessary for you. us. Yeah. And, and we talk about that a lot, right? Is that those goals can be arbitrary. Right, and you can just grow and grow and grow, but still not have what you need to be happy. And you can take in a ton of work and be busy, but not be profitable. Absolutely, you 100%. can you can be covered up, busy, and not be making money. And we learned years ago what jobs are profitable, what jobs, and you know when you talk about changing the industry and the podcast and and having coaches and having all these other different deals, it's like okay. There's so many guys, and they'll listen, and they they ask questions on your podcast. They ask questions on the ASOG deal. Oh, hey, what about this? Hey, what about this? And it's like, are, are you not listening? Okay. Yeah. You need to understand, you know, don't say yes to everything. Yeah, exactly. You know, and then you can have time. If the guy was covered up with work, but it's like, okay, he can't leave. You know, we, we uh, the first time we decided, hey, we take off for a week and take a vacation, you know, with the family. And it was like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Is is the work going to be here when we come back? Are the people going to, you know, keep keep coming? Are they going to keep bringing it to us? Oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. And it's like you can make yourself sick worrying yeah. or you can just schedule and then you tell your customers, hey, we're off that week. This is family time. People understand, oh, right. my gosh, you know, it's family time. Oh, my gosh, you you're need a, that. You're a mom. You're a... And because they're moms, they're dads, and they're yeah. like, oh, yeah, you know, we take off and go to, to Disney, and we, you know, and it's like, yeah, they understand. It's not we take off, but that's it, what that's people That's very do. much a product of the area that you're in, though. I'm, <laughs> I'm just... if What... It was so... It, it's a unique area. People are understanding your area. I, I get... We, we moved our time, our open time, back a half hour because I dropped my kids off to, at school and my service advisor also drops their, his kids off at school. We could not be at the shop on time consistently to open the shop at a certain time. So I just moved back to the time a half hour. You would not believe the comments I get. What, what do you mean you open it? Those are... Those are banker hours. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. Well, but well, you, what, do, what do you mean? You also have to make um, a lot of people don't have the early drop off or the late pickup, and you we, try to make it convenient. Yeah, you're right, and we we do that. And we do so that. So you have the the but drop the, boxes. The the issue is the waiting. So if I, I've been in business over ten years. But if in the first like five years, I just shut the shop down for a, a month, two weeks, we wouldn't have customers. They'd be gone. I, I just wouldn't have any. And you know, you'd, you'd be like, okay, well, this isn't going to be just one or two weeks of no revenue. This is going to be six to eight weeks of no revenue <laughs> because I need to, to get more people in and, and know that they can call. Who's answering my phone? Every single time those phone calls come in, somebody's got to answer the phone. Because if I don't care how loyal they are, the problem is a plethora of options. That's what becomes the, uh, the, the problem. In On my street, within a half mile south, half mile north, there are probably 20 shops. 20! Meaning if you've got a brake squeal, they're not going to wait because Dave decided to take off when this, the whole shop shut down for two weeks and they're going to – why? They could give it to crap. I've got a break problem now. I'm not waiting two weeks. And that's all part of educating your consumer, your, your customer. We're blessed. The area where we are is a nice, nice area. Yeah. You know, we, I give you numbers on – you know, the average price of a house in Middle Oathian is $350,000. Um, you know, in our neighborhood, there's down the street, and it was rural, so they built in neighborhoods. And so there weren't any neighborhoods there. And uh, so, you know, down the street, the houses are 500000 around the corner. You understand there. that in Oscar Gomez's area, 
three hundred fifty thousand dollar house doesn't exist. Well, but or it's an alley. That's it's that's, a dump. that's California though. It's nine hundred thousand dollars <laughs> for the dump. Yes, nine hundred thousand. And so, so he's being kind of real modest about his neighborhood. Okay, and he sits on a little two and a half acre lot. I'm sure it's worth about three mil. Yeah, and it's got an old house on it and a barn that looks like a shop. The guy next door just has a house, and I bet he could sell it for three million. And that come in and wipe the house out and build a brand new one. But you when know. did you buy that that plot? When, when, when Noah ago? came over on the ark, <laughs> <laughs> way back in the beginning. You know, when you talk about you've been in business ten years, and Lucas just built a new deal, but he's been in business while well. John's been twenty two weeks. And I'm years. brand new at this. Twenty five. He's years. his first day. Um, yeah, <laughs> we've been at that location going on thirty years. I've been in business forty years. Yeah. And so many times we talk about marketing and they, that'd be another subject for another podcast on all these ones that they're marketing pros and experts and everything. And yeah. you walk in my shop, we've won. Oh, you have the wall of fame when you walk in his shop. Yeah. You got a picture with him and Mike Rose and no, then a but, picture with him and Mike Rose. And, <laughs> did I say a picture of him and Mike Rose? There's a couple of those, Okay. <laughs> Wait, but wait. it's all the race car drivers he knows. Like, what was the lady's name in NASCAR? No, Monica, we're talking whatever? about. We're talking about that. Danica. We yeah, won. Uh, I thought he was her. going on Monica Lewis yeah. there for a minute. <laughs> we won. Uh, but best, he has a wall of fame. Best, really does seriously. Best in Ellis County. They came out that four years ago. We've won every year, and not Midlothian, the county. We've won best in DFW Southwest. Yeah. That's like uh, two or three counties. We've won. and uh, If he wins course, another trophy, he'll have to hang on <coughs> Oh, I've wall. got some on that I, table. Now. I, I got, got, a, I got a table. question, though. And so it's he part of how question. you're marketing. It's part of how you're. <laughs> well, you got to see some of that as long, your longevity. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Which is, right. you know. Okay, but, what's the question? But how, did you ever feel like giving up? You know, it it's like, okay, you can either, you, you guys ask what's the name of the shop. So you can either, when adversity hits you, we got married, all of a sudden it's like, you know, you get the rug pulled out from underneath you. You just got a mortgage. You just got a new record. You, uh, all, all that. And it's like, psh, okay. And so you can either go, woe is me, woe is me. Yeah. Or you can say, okay. <laughs> Right. Let's, let's go on. And, you know, we went to the other one, built that up, and then it's like you lose that, and you're like, okay, I've got, you know, four kids now, and and what do we do? Oh, my gosh. And it's like you just you just always wake up, just well, feed off. on and go again. <laughs> go back to work, you know. You have to have that mentality – it's, you know, a lot of it out there is, oh, right now is, oh, oh you owe me or, oh, uh, you know, right. I'm entitled to. And it's like, okay, we're from the old generation. You work for it. You earn it. And so when those things happen, it's, it's like. It's gone and dead, dear. It's like, okay. It's gone we, and dead. We, we, we got to. think that way You know, anymore. we got to go on. <laughs> and uh, so I guess it's going on six years, seven, six years. I had a heart attack. Right. And. uh they saved my life, and, and it was like, okay. So we had to, it was like, it's like the Lord takes care of stuff if you <laughs> yeah. don't get in his way. Yeah. And that was back when I did the micro commercial. It was, it was like a, 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 a blessing because they had called and uh, said, hey, we want you to try these brakes. So I had a heart attack, and it's like, Okay. They wanted you to try like brake pads. Yeah, so we we tried them first. We were like a, a I don't want to say a beta tester. It was like they picked a bunch of shops to try sure. these brake pads, and then you had to. Yeah. They would send them to you. You yeah. would say, "Hey, I need brakes for ninety eight Suburban." Mm-hmm. They would send you the brakes, and you'd put them on, and then you fill out. A yeah. form and, and submit it to them. Hey, what do you think? How had it go? Did they fit? Blah blah blah. <clears throat> so we. What kind of brake pads were they? The Wagner brake pads. Which line? The OEX. Oh yeah, that's okay. what the commercial was for. Oh okay. Kind of a big deal. 
Oh, and here so uh, that was his mouth. words. He made that up for the advertising. That's a cool story. Kind of a big deal, you know. And the guy that was putting it on got all upset. He said that and came to him and said, that's not in the script. Don't say those words. Mike Rhodes came to the guy that's putting it on and said, you need to get off my set. I'm saying those words. And chase the guy that's putting the commercial together off the set. <laughs> so uh, I had the heart attack, and then it's like, okay, what are we going to do? Right. We're going to get by for a while. So Wagner was sending me the brake pads. So we said, okay, well, we can only take in brake jobs, you know, quick, easy deals. And... Uh, yeah, I'd set the lift, uh, and my wife would, I'd take the, she would take the tires off. She'd take the wheels off and set them down, and I'd do the brake job, because you can't you lift yeah, you nothing. Can't lift, yeah. And for several months, we got by basically on brake jobs, and the blessing was we didn't have to pay for parts. Yeah. Because they were sending me the, the yeah. parts. Yeah. And then it was like you get so many, well, then... The guy that was in charge of it knew what was going on, and he goes, "Oh, you get all you need." <laughs> right, and that's how we got by. That's how we survived, and so it was a blessing. And then at the end of that, they said, "Hey, we want you to do, a, you know, a, we want to fly you out and see if you can do a commercial with our celebrity." And I was like, "Well, who's your celebrity?" And they were like, "Well, we can't tell you." And it's like Monica Lewinsky, <laughs> and it's like, okay, Good story. <laughs> There's, he wasn't going there's, to do it. There's he knew several. Who it was. There's, really? There's seriously? Several, there's seriously? Several, there's several guys in the industry that are millionaires mm -hmm. that I do not agree with yeah. the way that they do business, the way that they operate, and these mm -hmm. companies want to use these people, yep. and they want them to promote their products. And there's several of them that it's like I don't. I'm, I'm nobody. I'm not going to associate but myself. I'm with not going to put my, my values are. And oh, they were rock like, solid. so they said, that, yeah, that's yeah, right. really cool. But can you, I cannot think of a, an advertising, an advertisement with a shop owner in it that, Hey, my shop or my shops use XYZ brake pads. Can you think of one? Uh, there's a couple in magazines and stuff like that. Yeah. <laughs> Is there? But yeah, that was, a, it was kind of a new really? deal Yeah, that they were doing this yeah. and they wanted to use a shop owner yeah. to give it credibility sure. because their celebrity doesn't do break jobs. Yeah. yeah. But they said, and I thought, okay, well, they're using one of these, you know, and it's like, and they said, no, really? Okay. So we're going to fly you out, you know, Monday and blah, blah, blah. And, and I said, um, well, you have to tell me who it is. And they said, we can't. And so, uh, you know, we'll fly you out there and, and, see how you interact with them and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, let me put it this way. If you don't want to tell me, then you can fly me out there. If it's one of four people, yeah. you're going to put me back on a plane and you're going to fly me back home. You have very four specific, you should call them out. Who is it? <laughs> No. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, no. <laughs> so, because they're millionaires, they're, a lot of people like them. Right. I just didn't agree. And, uh, you know, with how they do business. And so uh, they said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there was, there was a panel of 10, and they were like, yeah, 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 You know, and I was like, and I'm on the camera, and I said, and they look, and they look, and they said, you're serious. And I said, yeah, what well, this is commercial. I said, I don't care. That's right. why I'm not a millionaire, but, <laughs> 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 you know, why well, don't buy, you know, but that's how, and so then they told me, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. That'd be kind of cool. Right. And then when you got there and find out there was three guys, a young guy, a middle-aged guy, and an old guy. I won't tell you which I was. <laughs> <laughs> and then, he wasn't uh, a young guy, I promise you. <laughs> I wasn't a middle-aged guy. Either. And then uh, they brought him in and, you know, okay, he's talked to him. And the young guy was like, and I was like, dang, if I don't say something, I ain't going to get it. Yeah. So then I spoke up. And talk to them, and I joke with them, and it's a funny deal. And Mike Rose is the nicest guy, but yeah. uh, he's like real quick, so he uh, he catches everybody, you know. And everybody's like, right. "Oh, if I can just say something, you know." He'll say something, you say something, he say something, crack you up. 
And it was like, and everybody's like, it, it's a contest to see who can right. say He's something, weedy. crank him up. And it was like, and so I said a couple of things. And uh, his his parents the week before, they were in New York because he does stuff for CNN. And uh, I was like, hey, Mike, you know, you were in uh, in New York last week with your parents. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, oh, my gosh. The president came to town. The pope was in town. And uh, uh, the UN was in council. And I said, did you get to talk to the Pope? You know? And he goes, oh, no, no, we got a town because the Pope was there, the president was there, but the UN was in council. And he says, so they had all the streets shut down and, you know, protecting yeah. the president and the Pope. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is like a, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to, you know, Pope doesn't come over here very much and, you know, to see him. Right. And I said, oh, wait a minute, I forgot you're my crow. You just call him up and say, hey, uh, this is a Michael Rowe. Can I speak to the Pope? And he cracked up laughing. And so and then they, uh, they called me that night and said, okay, we're going to pick you up at, at 9.30 or 6.30 in the morning, take you out to the deal. And I was like, oh, my gosh, I got hired. And I was like, and, and I was like, oh. And the other guys, they went out, you know, stayed out late. Yeah. So about 9.30, they called and go, Hey, we messed up. We're going to use the other guy. And I was like, <laughs> okay, so hi, hello. Right. Yeah. Disappointed. I'm like, dead gum. I got fired before I even got hired. I know, right? Oh, my gosh. And I was like, I was feeling down. And, and my daughter was like, Dad, you're out in California. We were on, where Route 66 comes in, mm-hmm. right there on Santa Monica Pier. Yeah. Could look out and see the ocean. <clears throat> and she goes, you're in California. Just enjoy it. You know? Yeah. And I was like, the next morning I got up and I was like, you know, I'm right here by the pier. I'm going to go over there at McDonald's, give me a sausage biscuit, walk out on the pier. I could see people fishing out there. I said, I'm sit out here. I don't get to relax too much. Yeah. And I went out there and then I came back and got a shower and they picked me up at like 11 o'clock. Car picks us up, takes us out there, me and the other guy. And I thought, I guess they're just going to feed us. I don't know what's going on. Yeah. And this guy comes running over to the door and opens the door and says, come on, Jeff, come on. We got to get you ready. We got to get you to sign all these papers and, and uh, get everything going and, and uh, get you makeup, get you fed, and we'll start yeah. filming after lunch. And I was like, man, I don't know what, got, what, what happened, but I got hired again. You're right. <laughs> uh, emotional roller coaster, huh? I'm, so I'm signing these papers, and I'm like, where it says how much you get paid, there's no number in there. <laughs> right. Hey, just out of curiosity, how much I get paid? Oh, it's it's, it's a union deal. It's, it's, a, it's a contract, you know, union deal, right. you know. And I'm like, okay, well, what's a union deal? Oh, it's a sliding scale, sliding scale. Okay, well, where's it start? Where's it in? <laughs> right. <laughs> and it was like, and then uh, I, I went up to my, when they put me out there with Mike and, and uh, he goes, Hey, you know what we're doing? I said, I'll well, have a clue. <laughs> right. <laughs> I said, they just said, Hey, come out here and, and uh, stand right there. And he goes, well, and he pulls out this form and he's showing me, it's like a story, like a comic book storyboard. And this is what we're doing. And, oh, huh. and he goes, I want you to have some more lines and he started writing this stuff out. And it's just like, Phew. and he goes, you didn't know what's going on. I said, no, I just, Figure it's a God thing. I said, to come out. If it works out, great. Right. We're done. I go back to work tomorrow or Wednesday or whatever. And he was like, oh, my gosh. And it was so funny because, you know, it, he'd say something, I'd say something, and he'd crack up laughing. And he'd come over and he says, I want you to say this. And I was like, he goes, yeah, I love your, your accent. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> But, you know, it's just deals like that as you go along and laugh. It's like, yeah. okay, you know, you just have to, you know, you don't want to say roll with the punches or get beat down all the time. Right. But something happens, you just, you know, you decide, okay, I can either stay on the ground or I can get back up and try something else. And, you know, when we first time we took a, a, a week off, it was like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh, we're going to have customers when we come back. Well, we had customers. You know, when I had my heart attack, it was like, oh, my gosh, what are we doing? And, you know, it, it worked out and took care of itself. When I just had my shoulder, and you talk about six weeks, 
So the doctor said it was six weeks. So we normally take off a week at Thanksgiving, two weeks at Christmas. That's three weeks. So we just had to figure three more weeks. You can get you can get by three weeks, no you, pay. You know, so, so when when I was younger, right? When I was I started my shop when I was you're 18. still younger, by the way. Yeah. It, well, I mean, compared to these two old folks <laughs> over here, um, I remember. Um, I remember when things went wrong in my life, they felt like a big deal, right? Didn't matter what it was. Everything seemed like a big deal at one point or another. You know what I mean? Yes. And um, I was probably 21 or 22 years old. And uh, my dad was in with this pastor, okay? And they had bought this piece of property, a bunch of pieces of property. And this was about the time 2008 had happened, right? And I remember everything went down. And that pastor called my dad. And he said, uh, Wayne, the Lord's laid it on my heart. You're going to take that property, and you're gonna you're gonna take the debt for it because if I take the debt, it's going to damage the ministry. And and it was something like forty thousand dollars a month. And so the other business had slowed down. We'd been building houses. We'd been doing this other stuff. I was running the shop at the time, and my dad said yes. And Lord have mercy, I thought I was going to have a heart attack, right? And I I I think back about your story. And I think about my dad's story, right? Because and that's where a lot of people have problems with Christianity or saying they're church yeah. people or whatever, because it's in, and, uh, you know, we've dealt with that with, uh, you know, knowing the behind the scenes at a church or knowing yeah. the, the politics. Well, and it's like sometimes you have to think those guys don't. And I don't want to be ugly, but it's just like, you know, they. there's a different reality than what we have waking up, going to work every day, yeah. having to make a living, having to make sure that, that we pay the bills, blah, blah, blah. And so sometimes that can affect you and you can, or yeah. you can say, okay, you're not supposed to judge. Yeah. And it's like, okay, that affected your dad, that affected your life. And it's like, yeah, okay. Yeah, and, and, and it affected my perspective of that. David and I have talked about that, right? Because it, it had a, a tremendous effect on my perspective of Christianity and religion as a whole, right? And so... And that's not it, what we're talking about on here, but that comes back to your perspectives on what makes you, you know, what makes you happy, what is well, worth, you know, what are you making the money for? Right. And uh, it's it's like you can either... Let it affect you for the rest of your well, life. See, that's that's the thing, and it's it's, it's hard to turn loose. That, that's the thing is because my dad, <clears throat> right? While I'm over here flaming mad about it, my dad says, "You know what? I'm not worried about it. It's not a big deal. It'll be all right." And so me, that upsets me worse, <laughs> right? And he said, "Listen, I'm telling you, I'm not going to worry about it. It's just going to be what's going to be. We're going to do whatever we got to do. I, if they want to take it all, let them take it all." What are they going to do? And, you know, I, I say this sometimes. I remember this old coach saying on, on TV one time, he said, uh, uh, you've lost a bunch of football games. Uh, are you worried about getting fired? And he said, I ain't worried about it. He said, what do you mean? He said, they can't eat me. Right? <laughs> like, I'll just go yeah, get man. another job, right? <laughs> and so I think about that, and I, I think about what you went through, and I'm thinking about my dad as you're telling this story. Because all of a sudden, he seems a whole lot more wise as I've gotten older. <laughs> right? Because he's been through these things too. You've been through these things. And instead of getting upset and reacting, because I think it's it's when we react and we have a, uh, what was it Rick always told me? He said, don't have a, a permanent reaction to a temporary problem. Amen. Right? Yep. And so I, I pay attention to the choices you've made. I'm thinking about the choices my dad's made. That turned out to be a multi-million dollar win for him. Right? Now it wasn't that there wasn't struggle. It wasn't there wasn't challenges. It was it was hard. Things didn't go the way they planned. They did take knew. some of it. My dad, I don't think he cared. I don't. I, I don't think he entered. I don't. I don't think he cared. But you don't. You don't get the setup that he has been able to grow and sustain and not be smart. Oh, he's smart. He, I, I used to think he was. He saw the everything coming crashing down around everything and went, 
It'll pass. All right. He did. I'm going to float I, this for I a while. I was 16. Did you have a half of this uh, place to stay? Like lay your head. Yeah. You know, you pay we never bills. went without. Yeah. We never went without. And I, I was 16, 17 years old, didn't think he knew a darn thing. <laughs> and I, I, I tell this story sometimes. I remember my daddy always wore bibbed overalls, right? Big old beard. And I remember going to a restaurant one time. And we walked into that restaurant, and none of the waitresses wanted to serve us. Had a bunch of construction workers with us, right? And they, they come over there, and she was upset about having to serve a bunch of hillbillies, you know. And, and think she's going to get a tip. Right. And so when he... You know, when we got ready to leave, he pulls out a roll of hundred dollar bills that big around and starts counting out the money to pay for the bill. And every time we went in that restaurant ever again, they all wanted to serve us. Hey, you know? let me help you. Right. And that's the deal that you have to do is even if you're having a hard time, if you go you know, you have to realize that's how those people make their living. Yeah. You go to a restaurant, you still have to take care of them and, and it's like it don't matter what you're going to. If it's too bad that you can't go and and pay your food and take care of them, then don't yeah. go, you know, you get your you blown sandwich. But, yeah. you know, this last deal with the, it wound up being three months. We thought yeah. it was going to be six weeks. Hey, we planned for that. Then on January 1st, he didn't release me. And it was like, okay, well, we can get by a little bit longer. Right. <laughs> and it's like, you know, you know these shop owners, well, you tell me how many you can count on one hand out there that can go three months with no income. None. I don't, I don't know hardly any. There's a bunch that couldn't do three weeks. Yeah. 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 Well, One and, week that's thing. what I'm saying. It's and like, so it was like we were off three months, no income. And it was like we didn't get no GoFundMe or anybody. You know? hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. We had I some, gave you 20 bucks, dude. Yeah. I gave you some GoFundMe. But, but I mean, that, and, that's the but thing we had is calls. if the shop's not profitable. We had shop, We had uh, Dutch call, and I think Bill called. Hey, you need anything? Hey, can we come help? And John's over there. Hey, you know, what do you need? What can we do? And, and hey, can I bring one of my guys down there? And it was like, okay, well, that would be more of a strain on us, more of a pressure, more more stress. We are already stressing. Let me help him. No and, matter what I offered, no, I've got it under control. World's just fine. And it's like, okay, so then it was three months and we got released. And it's like, okay, are you going to have any business? And I was like, uh, okay, well, people have been calling. Can't just tell them, and we schedule them. Okay, well, we can start here, and we'll schedule The three months was kind of neat because you do an oil change, and in about three months, the people are ready for the next oil change. Right. And so they were calling, and we had two or three weeks booked out already waiting on us, and they were calling, and, and the time frame was, like, perfect because the ones that we'd done oil changes for before we left, we're ready for their vehicles to come yeah. back in. And now when you sense. have a, a brake job, that was like, oh, my gosh, my brakes. You're, you're doing all the work yourself, though, yeah. right? And so you have, yeah. oh, my, oh, my gosh, my brake jobs, you know. And it's like, okay, we have good relationships with certain other shops. And it's like, okay, well, you need this right now. We understand. We, can, we can't do nothing for you. Call this shop. But we yeah. also believe in the certified auto repair and so many guys miss this with be certified or or Napa Car Care or whatever mm-hmm. that has offers their customers warranty nationwide warranties. Yeah. So it's like okay, if there's a warranty issue, hey, we can't do nothing. But guess what? There's a one eight hundred number you call. Yeah. They will get They'll you get to you a shop else, that yeah. will take you it. If you have a breakdown, okay, hey, we understand you. breakdowns happen. We can't have you right now. And the, okay, well, I'll go over there this time, and then. They're right back to us. And it's just the loyalty that we built because of the customer service, because we offer like a concierge service. Yeah. We offer, we were offering this before COVID I, hit. I, I think it's bigger than that, though. I, I, I think it's a, a, you're doing it a long time, right? And I think that's got a lot to do with it. But, you know, I, I've always a, a, been a huge Zig Ziglar fan, right? Yeah, and, and, and he was always positive. Right. Well, one of the things he said was he said, you know, you get where you're going in life by helping enough other people get where they're going. And he said, but one of the things that has to happen is you have to do it for the right reasons. You can't do this for, for an ulterior motive. You can't do this to try and accomplish something else for yourself. If, if you're serving somebody, if you're doing it to serve, that that other human being will recognize that you're trying to help them. Well, and, and they, then so... Like along that lines, they called and said, hey, we want you to come to ETI. Yeah. We're going to take care of it. We're going to pay your way. Yeah. 
we're going to sponsor you. And I'm like, okay, we've just been off three months. Okay, we're back to work. Now we're going to take another week off. But it's like a, a blessing that, that they sponsored us to come out here. But then I get here. Yeah. And the way you guys talk about me to all these other ones on going, oh my gosh, this is Jeff. Oh my gosh, he's a rock. Oh my gosh, this is, he does all this, he does all that. That means a lot to me. And it's like, I'm oh, not, I thought you were we're not out us. here. I thought, I thought we were <laughs> no, saying something I, bad. I, I was getting nervous there for a second. I'm like, oh no, we're this is going to be rough. <laughs> we're not out here to promote Jeff Buckley and John Firm. Yeah. We're out here to help our industry. To we're help. Up, we're out here to tell these guys about these new deals, this is networking. We're out here to make some connections to to sure. get some new uh, tools and, and to Jeff, show that these tools work. It's it's but it's bigger than that, right? It's bigger than Why that. Why do you keep saying that? It's not. It, he said he, it beautifully. You said it beautifully, Jeff. Don't listen to him. He's a yeah. He, <laughs> but you, your you, shop's like you don't need to be there, right? At your shop? Oh no, I I don't. My but, shop yeah. run on its own. But yeah. But what I'm saying though is that you're reaching a demographic, right? And you're bringing a positive message to a demographic. You're doing the J&J show. You're doing the training. You're doing the things. We we reach a specific demographic. You guys reach a specific demographic. CARM reaches a specific demographic. And at the end of the day, just like the reason that we do what we do is because I don't want people to feel like I felt at one point in my business, right? I don't want them to feel alone. And and this this story has been touching for me. I did not know this story. <laughs> I didn't know it. And it's been touching for me because, you know, I, there's been people posting in ASOC. And, and just the other day somebody posted and said, I'm, I'm going to have to throw in the towel. I'm going to have to give up. Now, this isn't working. I can't do this. And, and we see those and hear those all the time. And, and I've had talks. For years I wouldn't post the comments publicly. I would, yeah. you know, message them or I'd call them and say, hey, tell me what's going on. Tell me what you're doing yeah. and give them suggestions. You can't run someone's life, and you, all you can do is make suggestions. Whether they do it or not is yeah. up to them. We had a guy local that was like, oh, my gosh, hey, I'm closing my shop January uh, 31st. I said, what He's are you going to do? Feb February 1st. Yeah. He goes, well, I don't know. And I'm like, okay, well, why are you closing? Well, I don't, I don't understand this. I don't understand, you know, he, he didn't know if he was making money or not. He just knew he couldn't pay the bills. Yeah. And it's like, okay, you know, and, and he was in a meeting and, and somebody asked him, hey, what's your KPI? What's your, and starts asking him all these initials. Well, that was Kim and Brian. They came to the meeting that time and he, they opened up his eyes. But I think it was the meeting before that uh, with uh, someone else that you know who I'm talking about. And uh, it was asked, and, and the guy was, like a deer well, in the well, headlights. You guys like that. Like a was deer Lucas, in the headlights. Was he on there? No, no, no. Like no, a deer no. in the headlights <laughs> because you can either ask somebody a question showing that you care or you can ask somebody a question to embarrass them. And this guy didn't know that, you know, what all these letters meant. He was yeah. a mechanic. He's still yep. a mechanic. I turn on the wrenches. Yep. You don't know nothing about numbers. That's the deal that we try to promote is, okay, guys, you, you, you're having problems. There's solutions. There's free training out there. Yeah. There's yeah. AMI. AMI. And it's like so many have forgot that AMI, the management training, can help your service advisor. They can help the girl that answers yeah. the phone or the person that answers the phone. They can help. Or you can go and listen to the guys that say yes. <laughs> and it's yeah. like, okay, but... In reality, that doesn't always work for everybody, and it depends on your well, they, demographics. But, it depends but, on what you can what you can handle. Oh, I'm getting ready to kick a hornet's nest. I'm sorry. Go ahead, don't kick it. I want to. But, this but you, you know what I mean. It's you already like, brought up religion. We can get into that. That's yeah. more fun. Oh, well, no, I, no. I want to hear this hornet's nest. Well, I, but yeah, I, <laughs> Jeff is we're, not. Gonna we're let not. You say we're not they, stern hornets. We're trying to. But but why do they? Do you think it's possible that the reason they tell them right and 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 so we. We tell some of our listeners to say, yes, get the client in, right? But you don't always say, 
Yes. Right? We qualify our clients. You know how I operate. Discovery conversation. Right? You know exactly how I operate. But but do you think that some of those folks who teach those methods teach that method to get the shop overwhelmed to where they need services that help them to get right because it's it's almost like a continual I have to come back for more I have to come back to get more because right and and there's plenty of people successful there's plenty of people successful doing that but is it is it building a need for that coach's services by getting them overwhelmed what have you helped if they're overwhelmed? What have you done for our industry if you're disappointing customers, if you're adding to, you know, mechanics haven't always had the best reputation, and that's part of what we're trying to do by educating, of by changing our industry. I don't think industry. they give two flips about the that's perception of the industry. They're just trying to make that that cash. That's all they're they're worried about doing well and that's it right i don't think they care the the end consumer the biggest the service you end up doing towards a customer is is being disingenuous bringing them in the money bringing them in to chase the money but you bring them in under false pretenses Mm -hmm. you bring them in under one that we heard this kind of annoyed us but it was something that was prevalent and taught by very prominent people is that you're always an expert at whatever car they call about and, and do you guys see, do you guys do you Lexus? in this deal here and oh you, yeah and yeah and we're had, experts at Lexus the vehicles Honda you gotta know and, your market you gotta know your customer and if you don't know those and you're just saying well, the, yes well the, the, it's not even just yes come on in it's telling the customer you know, hey, have you guys worked on it. Land Rovers? Oh yeah, my, my I have I have fantastic Land Rover technicians. Yep. They're experts. They they're, they're <laughs> taught to say that to the customer who's asking genuine. Que- that's a good question for a consumer that's, to ask. Yeah, it is. Do where, you work on this model? Have you worked? Did you have the tooling? Those are good questions. They're lying to the customer, yep. and they frame it as, well, you want to talk your guys up. Well, okay. Yes, I want to. I, if they're incompetent, I, why am I employing them? Exactly. I get that, but there's a certain level of there's a certain level where you just you don't go past that and say, "Well, yeah, I'm, I'm an expert at Fiat's." Is it called I can do integrity? Most things. They don't think they're being a not. What's well, the opposite? <laughs> but say again, that comes back to to. What is your values? What is your morals? What will you stand up for? And so, you know, Mike Clary does yeah. training. He does diesels. He has a shop. And yeah. he'll tell you, yeah, I might have a hybrid, and then I might have a bucket truck sitting right there. Yeah. He came in my shop, and we had a BMW or Mercedes, something up on the lift. And he goes, you work on those? And he goes, I won't even touch a European car. And... It was smart, a BMW. I remember the car. Smart guy, and you know they can they can fix anything. And he says, "I don't even touch those." And I'm like, "Okay, we tell our customers, I do basic maintenance on them. Yeah, if it gets me on that, got to go to the dealer. You know, and they say bring money with you, and uh, don't send them to the dealer. Tell and it's like certified no, auto repair. There's got to be a certified auto repair that does." You remember we're out, out in Leave the county. Right? <laughs> Let me take it to where it needs to go. Yeah. I'll handle it. That's and my so, philosophy. And, and we, and I don't want it out of my sight. Yeah. And we used to. I, don't, well, we I actually, definitely don't want to go to the We dealer. actually That's would sketchy. used to do that. If there was a, a vehicle came in and, the, and it had a, we were doing other stuff and it had a warranty, you know, Candace would call and say, hey, what's the warranty on this? And if they said, hey, it's covered. We yeah. would take it over there. Yeah, yeah. And, if, it, if it's coming under a factory if warranty, it, then yeah, we'll, yeah, we'll call it in. If it was, we, try, we try to do the legwork. And if it was something that we didn't do, like I don't do engine work anymore, and it's like, okay, well, we would take it to, you know, because uh, we have shops that we trust. We'd either take it to them uh, most of the time. You, when you say engine work, you're not swapping engines? I don't do engine work. I won't pull a head. I won't pull a... Yeah, okay. You know, okay. I yeah. used to. We yeah. do everything. I mean, yeah. I have put in many a motors <laughs> and uh, back when that's why my shoulders bad back when we didn't think we needed the, li- the lifts yeah. and we would just yeah. uh, the back, we yeah. would shove that transmission up there and stab it and 
Always. Lace <laughs> bragging about all that. And so, <laughs> you know, it, it, and now I'm, I'm older, and so we've slowed down. There's things, that, but we know what, what makes us money, and then we know what, you know, if I'm trying to slow down, what we can do. Yeah. And so it's like, you know, you talk about that vehicle, and we were in the OEs right here, and the Toyota and the Honda guy said, we both use the same system. Yeah. The Enzo. But and he goes, really but different. they don't work the same. You can't say, yeah. take in a Honda and you did a Honda, you did five Hondas, and then a guy calls with a Corolla and you say, oh, yeah, I'm an expert at that. Yeah. And the Toyota guy goes, no, they're different. Yeah. So, so don't say that you can do that. That shows that that guy had some integrity. Are we saying these other guys don't have integrity? It's not for us to say. But it's... Oh, we say it all the time. It's... It's, <laughs> it's disingenuous. It, it it's makes it harder on, sometimes. Yeah. We're trying to say we're professionals. We never stop buying tools. We never stop learning. Yeah. You know, with this patch right here, I'm 65, and I just got this other one. Yeah. It's who, got, who would work towards a master when you're 65. This one, we have to renew every five years. Yeah. yeah. And it's like... We and and the reason I did that to begin with was to show my children. They're like, "Oh, I can't wait to get a school. Oh, I can't wait to graduate. Yeah. I can't never, wait to get a college." Never done. You need to get the mentality that you never stop learning, man. And it's like, okay, well, it doesn't matter in life, in your relationships. Yeah, and, that's absolutely right. That you know, and it's like right. it's like okay, we got shops on every corner. You got churches on every corner too. Yeah. So let me ask you this then. In closing, I, I think it's a great way to to close it up here because you know you brought it up. What What's the future for my father's shop? For my father's shop is we're kind of you know at the at the range there, and uh, you know our, uh, when you say what's your retirement stuff, our property and and the building is pretty much you know our retirement because. It's worth, you know, we own it, and yeah. we own the land, we own the building, and, and we everything in it. And it's like I'd like to see a younger guy, you know, come in, and, and a younger guy can now take employees, and a younger guy can, you know, we were grandfathered in when the city took us in, and so we have kind of limits on expansion and stuff. But, you know, uh, when we built it, we didn't put a restroom in there because yeah. we didn't need it. Walk over uh, to the house. You know, yeah. and it was $10,000 for a restroom back then. And so now it's like, okay, what well, to have employees. If you have a top shop with top clients and top equipment, you can't ask a top guy, mechanic to come in and work for you. And so, no, I oh, have a top restroom. By the way, wait, I don't have a restroom. Yeah. <laughs> and so we were looking at, you know, adding one on, but a, a young guy can come in and, and have a business that, you know, can expand and easily start producing the rates that, chain, that, baby. that some of these big guys do because we built it John up to that spot. Money. Yeah. But <laughs> I would like to, what I'd like to do is get out doing more of what we're doing right. this week. And, you know, we're working with, with different ones and it's like, you know, we do a lot of stuff with the schools and we had uh, a school that just won uh, in the tools for schools and they called us up and said, Hey, uh, we're doing these events in September up at Salt Lake City where they go out on the salt flats and the kids make a car and race it. And stuff. Yeah. We, we'd love you to come up and, and do some videos and promote that. And it's like, okay, that's great. We have to have sponsors to do that. Yeah. This week we've been making some more connections to work towards getting more yeah. sponsorships to to be able to go out and share the shops. Yeah. Be able, there's a ton of shops that, in our industry that do great things. Mm -hmm for people that do great things yeah. in their community. And that's what more people need to know about instead of the ones that are disappointing customers, you know? Yeah. And you have a lot of shops out there that are struggling. And it's like, there's more small shops than there are large shops. Yep. So the, so the Jeff Buckley vision is to share the story of the, Automotive technician, the automotive shop owner. To keep improving our industry, whether it be through training. There's a ton of free training out there. 
guys are asking, well, how do I get this training? Yeah. And, you know, we were talking with uh, uh, NGK, which is now, they've changed the name. But right, right. Shop Squad mm-hmm. offers a bunch of online free training. But yeah. then they'll come. If you get a group, like in your area or yeah. at ASOG, you say, oh, my gosh, we want to. Yeah. They will come in and, and do training yeah. for free. And it's like, why? Well, because they're trying to make sure that all these guys understand the issues that you can have with the product. Then it creates less comebacks on them. You don't put a part on parts can and yeah. throw a part in. Oh, that didn't work. Send it back. Yep. And they don't if if they're teaching you. We were talking with uh, one earlier that Dorman, Dorman, and Lester. He it says right there. Uh, Dorman Training, what? Dorman Training Center is what it said on his shirt. Yeah. And, and they're going to offer all this training. You know, we deal with Gates. Gates and that's has, all with G. I guess y'all yeah. probably know about that. Oh, yeah. Uh, Wix Filters. Lester's y'all's buddy, too. So People don't know Wix Filters has a university, and you think, okay, you can get a master's in filtration. Yep. Like, and it's like, okay, well, what does that mean? How much is there to a, to a filter, oil filter, coolant filter, air filter? Well, they teach... The system. Yeah. So all of a sudden they're teaching anything that oil touches, which is the engine. Yeah. So you think about, oh, my gosh, I'm bringing in a, a, young, a young guy. Hey, my lube tech. Let me let him do this training. And he starts sparking the interest, starts going, oh, my gosh, that's how that works. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. And all of a sudden you create a little fire in him where they yeah. I want to learn more. Well, they're not leaving the shop. You're not sending them and paying $700 to go to training. This is free training that they can do. Well, the schools are all the time looking for, oh, my gosh, what am I going to teach the guys this week? Oh, my gosh, I need some content. And it's like there's a ton of free training out there. Yeah. That's what, yeah. you know, we would like to do is go around and share some of that. You know, let Educate. It's just like what's going on here this week. You've been coming for a couple of years. Four years now. And it's like. Man, it's crazy, right? I bet I bet when you walked in there. You learned something this morning, though, didn't you? I learned something. Oh, every, we get blown away every single year when we just, come here. It's, just, it's, it's unbelievable. Awful. Yeah. The last deal I went with Donnie Steiffer in Detroit was called Connected Cars. Yeah. yeah. And mm-hmm. then they brought that up to them. Well, I remember that. Mm-hmm. And then it's just Six like, years ago. All the information just kept coming. I mean, the, the, the information that's here is is not like anything that's available at any other event. No. And, and look, we're involved with all these associations, and all they don't know this is no, happening. No, they do not. Right? So is and, there a need for what I want to do, for it, what you're doing? Of course. Because they, they sponsored you to come out here. Absolutely. And, and, and look, oh, I— Oh, you got sponsorship? <laughs> yeah. You didn't get none of it. Hey, okay. hey, don't worry about it. It's something we don't know. Yeah, it was funny because he, David, was telling me a story. He goes, "You know, it's so funny." He goes, "Lucas gets the suite, and then I sent him a picture of my room, and it kind of looks a like a broom closet." <laughs> <laughs> he got mad at talking. me one time. He 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 barely talked to me for like a whole week. You know what? He got mad at me. When I went in my room, I, I went in my room and I was doing something. I was like, oh, that's cool. It's just a neat little package of Q-tips. He's like, they gave you Q-tips? <laughs> He's like, they put oh, me yeah. out back with the hell. You didn't get no Q-tip. I didn't get any Q-tips. And I had forgotten Q-tips. He had piles of them. He's like, oh, yeah, they just give them away. Not on my level. They don't give it to us, <laughs> our, us regular folk down here, our little folk down here. We don't get Q-tips. Now, I know exactly how you feel, David. Same no, thing. Wait, 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 wait. You always. <laughs> I don't right get there. nothing. You always right there. You always get everything. Oh, you don't always go right there. there with us. Who got me the shirts? You did. You know, who got me my pants I'm wearing today? You did. Okay, but. I don't get nothing. You just said you got pants, you got I, but shirts. I, people give you That's stuff. just because you won't buy them for your damn sale. Don't worry about what. We ain't talking about that <laughs> conversation. <laughs> he bought these. Right? We have some new ones that weren't ready, and my p- wife sent a picture. This is my u- my new company uniform. She, she picked it. up. Seriously, yeah. She picked up the new ones, and it says the J&J show in the on the back. I saw the pictures. We have our J&J logo. Mm-hmm. You saw the, he showed I saw the you? pictures. I'm excited. Doesn't he look good in these pants? He does. He, he looks, looks slick. And he looks like a professional he got them for once. me. I, they weren't given to me from somebody. Yes, they were. They were given to me from him. No. You <laughs> the know? company gave them to me. I, I got a couple pins last week 
they were giving him, then he gave them to me. He shared, you know. <laughs> right? At least you at get, he's sharing. Yeah. I didn't get any Q-tips. I'm sorry. I'm really your partner. He, he looked at me and I'm, went, I don't, I don't know what to tell I you. Use that. some Kleenex or something. And then walked <laughs> away from me. That's how that went. Mm-hmm. <laughs> awesome. God, Lucas. Shall we talk about the... Thank you for listening to the Changing the Industry podcast. If you enjoyed the show, do us a favor and leave us a review on your favorite podcast player. And don't forget to set it to automatically download the latest episode. Our efforts with this podcast, the YouTube channel, and the Facebook group wouldn't be possible without the support of our awesome sponsors. So please take a moment, check them out by clicking on the links in the show notes.